Hello and welcome to today's Urban Conversation. Today's webisode brings great insights for working women considering marriage, children and an ambitious career. Thanks to Vivanta by Taj and Shopper Stop for supporting this episode. Today's guests are Ellen, a psychologist, Smriti, a mother of two young boys with a career in IT, and Naveen, husband to an architect and the father of two young children. I think we should set the context a bit more for this conversation and I'll start with you Smriti. Can you tell me a bit about sort of your work life, you know, number of hours you spend at work and the kind of dynamics that go into managing home, motherhood and work? I would say the number of hours that I spend in travel is much more than the number of hours at work because I travel about 30 kilometers a day which is really a challenge uh, for me to come to work more than the work itself. And then uh, any company expects around eight hours of work. So I do manage around four hours at office, four to five hours, what I get. And the remaining is, as always, when I in get transit. back home. In transit. Or yes. when you get back home. Yes, I do okay. have to. So the 30 kilometer transit every day takes how long? So I really can't predict the time slot, but a minimum of two hours, which can go up to two and a half and two hours, 45 minutes sometimes. So you work on the bus, those two hours yes. to work no. and two hours back? Yeah. Typically two hours of work on the, you know, in the morning, but in the evening when I'm returning back, it's typically sleeping time. So that's five hours of Commute travel every time every day, five hours at work, and then when you get back home, you manage the other three hours remaining right. of yes. work alone. Yes. Okay. So uh, what I do is when I get back home, typically I schedule my day in such a way that I reach home by 6.30, that's my deadline to reach. Everything is like a calendarized event. So I try to reach by 6.30, post 6.30 is the time with the kids, up to around two hours. Then comes cooking time, uh, dinner, serving them, bedtime stories, everything. Post that time again with my husband for an hour to just have a general discussion, conversation, whatever we want. Post that I again spend two hours minimum on the work. So by the time I really have the day off, it's almost 12.30 to 1 p.m. in the night. And what time does it start again in the morning? 5.30 to 6 in the morning. That's absolute That's madness. Right. That's madness. <laughs> Total madness. Naveen, how is it, how is it with, uh, for Lakshmi? Oh, well, has, you know, know, Lakshmi has a more uh, relaxed job. And, um, you know, uh, she works from 10.30 to 4.30. Uh, she's an architect. Uh, she's back home at uh, 5.30 uh, when my eldest son uh, uh, is back home. Luckily for us, uh, she made the choice of not having to choose a job which um, um, you know, would entail longer hours of uh, work because she feels um, a lot very, very guilty when um, you know, she misses out time with the kids. Uh, but you know, I think every family has got their own ways of handling these problems and as long as it's planned and, and well structured, I think you will find your own way. Which is where I think, Ellen, you come in, right? Because I think you have been meeting a lot of women, working women who really um, have a tough time balancing demands on the home front and on the work front. And I think today, um, given that the majority of urban women are educated working women, the moment they become mothers, the demands on them just increase. Right? not just externally, contextually, but also from within themselves in terms of how much they want to deliver on every single sphere that they are participating in. Well, Lakshmi, you're extremely right. I think the demands come a lot externally, but much more internally. That's where the whole phenomenon of guilt happens. You know? You're guilty when you're working that you're not giving enough time at home. When you spend a lot of time at home, then you're looking at, am I shortchanging the company, my colleagues? by not meeting team expectations and performing at the workplace. So guilt is a common emotion that's experienced. And like Naveen brought up earlier in the conversation, one of the things one needs to do is make choices. Uh, his wife has made certain choices, where to work, when to work, when to take a pause. Um, and also to define work-life balance for yourself. Now, work-life balance is a commonly thrown around phrase. Uh, I think it works, it's different for different individuals, but even for individuals, it's different at different stages of your life. Absolutely. So work-life balance, the number of hours you can put into work uh, are different at in your late 20s, early 30s, and in your 40s. You know, The balance must change, and you really need to look at making choices. So you've mentioned three things there. One is guilt. 
Second is making choices. And third is uh, finding the balance. In today's world, a lot of young middle class working couples feel that, hey, we need to be having children by a certain age, they need to be in certain types of schools, we need to have X amount in savings. By this age, we ideally should have invested in a, in a piece of land or a home, you should have a car. There is a lot of financial demand, so not, not just the quality of life right now, but also finances for the future, savings for the children. And, and alongside all of that sits your careers in terms of what you want to achieve, where you want to go, what, you know, um, your identity, how it, that's going to evolve individually too. Um, how do you think we can stitch this all together without being caught in, 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 a, in an environment where it's constant pressure? Intentionality is key. One must be intentional about choices. One must be intentional about planning. And for women, especially in the urban context in India, uh, we need to look at setting goals for ourselves, career goals, of course, but taking into consideration life goals as well. Uh, I think it's important for us to recognize that sometimes they would compete and we need to make uh, adequate pauses for life goals and during those pauses again to be intentional about where we want to get back into our career line. Uh, a lot of times women work and work really hard uh, but it's a job and you've not intentionally thought about where I would like to go with this. I think our effort would be much more rewarded if we were intentional about our choices. One of the things that women tend to do in India is put yourself last. You take care of kids, you take care of your uh, work, make sure you're performing as well as any other member in the team. Don't want people to pick up the slack for you. Uh, take care of your husband. And then if you are part of what we call the sandwich generation, where you have demands from parents who are getting older, uh, then there's very little time for yourself and you end up sleeping for five hours, uh, which is not the recommended number of hours one needs to sleep. Uh, so you need to look at what can I do to take care of myself because quite honestly you're the most prized uh, yeah. possession there. Crux of that yeah, ecosystem. Absolutely, because if you're not okay, uh, then what is going to happen to the rest of your world? You know, so. yeah. Naveen, tell me about how it's been for you and your wife. I mean, you did mention earlier that you know, she was able to take career breaks. Yeah, uh, basically for us, uh, you know, when we had our first son, um, uh, Lakshmi was uh, uh, working on her own, uh, she was having a consultancy firm and she would do architectural jobs for a uh, lot of people, a lot of clients. So when we had our first son, she took a conscious decision that she will not work for one year because she wanted to focus on the kid and um, you know, they give it proper care and attention. Uh, so when one year period was over, she started again and but uh, when she started again, she now chose only few uh, jobs, maybe two or three jobs at one time. She would never work more than that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she gradually started back um, in a full-fledged manner until we had our second son, where she took another conscious break for about one and a half years. Then she started to um, um, uh, do a consultancy where she realized that she wasn't now in kind of touch with what is going on now in architecture. So she consciously chose to take a job with an architectural firm so that she can again you know uh, learn the whole process what's new so she decided to work for a period of two years and um, uh, she worked for about one and a half years and recently she quit that job um, because uh, she really felt guilty about not spending time with the kids and there uh, um, also uh, with her job they asked her to put in a few hours extra after she completed one and a half years so now she's back, she's going to get back into her consultancy. So I guess if everybody plans um, um, in their own way, a structure which they can manage their careers and home life well, fantastic. I mean, that's the way to go forward. You know, I, I do have a question there. So obviously once you and Lakshmi got married and you were thinking of children and stuff like that, there was some thinking that went into it. Uh, possibly some of it in hindsight once you know that the child was arriving in a couple of weeks or in a couple of months and then you sort of had to figure out what. No, we were actually a little late. We didn't do any planning until the first child was born. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> which is which, yeah, with a lot of families yeah. that happens. Yeah, I know we didn't have a clue what was going to hit us. <laughs>
pre warned the second time around yeah. yes yeah maybe the second time you will be more prepared than the first time is always what i yeah, felt was you, you, yeah, you are more prepared but you never really prepared you know yeah. so <laughs> i have a, i have yeah. a question for smriti uh, were you able to take career breaks yes i did uh, but uh, not a very long career break i took a six month break uh, post pregnancy uh between two childbirths as well again so for the second one as well i took a six month break okay uh and were they were those breaks planned uh no not really it was not a planned break i knew that uh, this is the date that i need to go for the maternity break and from there on okay. i was so the career breaks weren't planned yes, the the, the maternity breaks were planned obviously you know until yes. you the child was coming even you like okay i need time off to yes. look after all that i had in my mind was a minimum 5 month break nothing uh, you know shorter than that that's all i had on mind but what will i do post that break how will i shape up my career back am i going to work back those kind of questions still were there in my mind i had no answers neither did I you discussed. have the time to find answers though uh yes i did that is only after the child birth nothing earlier to that after the child birth probably i was the only one with the child when the child used to sleep i used to think through so what next what next what should i do and of course my husband was quite supportive he used to guide me uh, a lot of times on what you can do how to come up because in it typically if you take a career break then the amount of things that you need to cope up with to come back to work is enormous so ellen, ellen what do you have to say here so obviously both between what you said earlier between what smriti said and what navin said about how they planned and what's happened with lakshmi's career as well uh planning seems to be the you know something that we repeatedly coming back to here yeah and i think you need to plan about your life goals do i want to be married um do i want to remain single and then what would be the consequences of that and am i prepared to deal with the consequences of that and then if i do get married how can i make my marriage work and my career work and where where do i want to go in my career what are my goals how high how far how involved and uh, do we have children what age do i want to have my first child keeping in mind your biological clock yeah. you know there are some things that are given we wish that everything around us was flexible but it's not uh, and you have to take cognizance of that now obviously planning means it's not something that you can do on your own i mean okay you can you can figure out a plan for yourself mm -hmm. but in executing that plan especially if you're considering marriage it means um having the other stakeholders buy into this plan and that's why right? you and have negotiable and non negotiables okay uh, right this is something you know i i have done this academic training this is my exposure this is where i want to head in terms of career i'm willing to negotiate certain things but non negotiable goals you know so uh, and you, you do and so that that clarity has to be there Absolutely. in every woman's mind Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation on educated working women needing to plan not just their careers but career breaks and personal life too. I'll see you on the next episode. Join our mailing list at chaiwithlakshmi.in forward slash subscribe and keep in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and Pinterest.